Hi everyone and welcome back into my kitchen and today we are going to be making a rice and cornmeal crusted catfish. Um, growing up I absolutely loved catfish. I used to go fishing with my grandpa and my dad all the time and so I kind of grew up eating it. I've always loved it. Um, and then there are some southern dishes that have really inspired me uh, to do this, to do it this way. Um, first is uh, Meetendorf's, which is famous for the thinly sliced catfish. That's what I'm going to try to do for you today. And then a lot of the uh, inspiration for this recipe, the rice meal especially, is coming from uh, Vivian Howard's book, Deep Run Roots. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to try to slice this catfish for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our first filet here. I have about three of them here. What I did at first is I put these in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. So they're not completely frozen, but so they do have a little bit of a stiffness to them. So you're gonna take a thinly bladed, very sharp knife. First thing you wanna do is hold, hold it flat like this. And then we're gonna come in and get kind of along the edge here. So that way I'm not skewing the knife up and down. We're going to come in and we're just going to start in the middle and just go slow with it. And try and make just as even strokes as we possibly can. Just keep it centered as much as possible. And there you have it. Got a little edge here, just going to slice off. So now we have two really thin slices off of that one filet. I'm gonna go ahead and put them in here because we are gonna actually soak these in buttermilk. Then I'm gonna do these other uh, two filets and then we're gonna get these guys soaking. Okay, so now we have all of our fish cut and now we're gonna start the marinating process. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and salt and pepper these. This is something that a lot of people miss at home, but you want to season it every step. It's one of the things that really kind of makes a big difference between what people find at home versus what you can find in a restaurant. These guys a little salt and pepper treatment. Now I'm going to take I have about two cups of buttermilk here and we're just going to pour this in. And then we want to make sure everything is fully covered in buttermilk. And then we're going to put this into the fridge for at least an hour. You can actually do this up to overnight if you want. Um, but at the very least, do an hour. So what this is going to do is it's really going to kind of leach into the fish. And it's going to give it a little bit of a tang. And really kind of just make it so when you fry it, it's going to be like super crispy and super flaky. All right, so into the fridge we go. Okay, so we are back with the catfish now. It has been soaking in buttermilk for a little over an hour. So now we're going to go ahead and start making our batter for it. So we're going to start off, I have one cup of rice meal that I made. So the way I did this is I actually just took regular long grain, ri long grain rice and put it into a coffee grinder or a spice grinder and just burr it up until it's about a medium coarse consistency. I'm going to add that. I have one cup of a medium grit cornmeal. Add that. I have a teaspoon of salt. This is like I said earlier, we want to season it every step. I have half a teaspoon of white pepper, a teaspoon of granulated garlic, and then I have a half teaspoon of smoked paprika. Now I like to use a bourbon barrel smoked paprika that comes from Bourbon Barrel Foods in Louisville, Kentucky, but if you can't get that, any good smoked paprika will do. So we're just gonna give this a little bit of a mix. And I know you're probably wondering to yourself, what is the rice going to do that the cornmeal doesn't? So that rice meal actually lets it get super crisp when you fry it. 
and it just creates a whole new texture. Okay, so we have that mixed up. So now I'm gonna take my tongs and we're gonna start pulling these out. When you pull them out, you wanna give them a little bit of a shake. Make sure they're nice and coated. You give them a little shake to get that excess off. And we're gonna drop them in here. And one good tap. Flip them over. And a good tap again. Now that I have some crust on there, I'm gonna go ahead and get in there with my hands. And really just kind of pat these guys out. Alright, and once they're done, let them get a little shake to get the excess off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a racked pan. And so this is, once we're done with all of these, this is going to go back into the oven, or not the oven, sorry, the refrigerator for at least another hour. Um, if you can do preferably two hours, do that, but at the very least an hour, this is really going to give a chance for all of that breading to really adhere itself to the fish. Alright, so our fish has been in the refrigerator for the last couple hours. We've gotten a nice crust on here with the cornmeal and the rice meal. So now we're getting ready to fry these guys up. So I have my cast iron skillet here. Um, I have about a quarter inch oil in the bottom of it. And then I have this heated up to about 350 degrees. Now I get to kind of cheat with, uh, with my brevel here because it has the oil control probe in it. So I know exactly what my temperature is. Um, but for you guys at home working on your stovetop, it's going to be about like a medium high. So I'm going to go ahead and take one of these and I'm going to go ahead and drop it in the oil. Now when you drop stuff in the oil like this, always do it away from you. So that way if it does splash, it's going to splash away from you and not towards you. You see how it wants to start bubbling right away. That means your oil is nice and hot. And we're going to leave these on about three minutes per side and then we're gonna pull them off. Now, as soon as we pull these off of, out of the oil, we're gonna put them onto a cooling rack, and I'm gonna immediately hit it with some more salt. Again, we're gonna flavor it every step. That, makes, that way, you make sure you have a well-seasoned product at the end. So we're gonna season these guys up, and then uh, we'll show you the last and final steps. Okay, so I went ahead and I flipped this guy over. You can see it's nice and brown through here. I did lose a little bit of the breading on that, my apologies. Um, so these are almost ready. And another little side note I just want to throw in here. If you're heating your oil up and you really want to watch your temperature, you can either get like an instant read thermometer or like a candy thermometer. So we'll do a really good job of telling you what your oil temp is. And then again, also these fish, you know, they're pretty thin because we cut them down. So they're going to cook relatively fast if you're uh, really kind of concerned about your temp. Again, a good instant read thermometer will be your best friend. So these guys are pretty much ready. I'm going to be a little bit, I'm going to err on the safe side, so I'm going to use my fish turner to pull this out. I'm going to bring it over here, put it on my cooling rack. Like I said, as soon as we pull it out, I'm going to hit it with some more salt. Make sure it's nicely seasoned. We're gonna go ahead and let that cool down for just a little bit. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Um, please check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. You can also find me on my webpage at mysouthernish.com. You can find me on Instagram at jrousey. You can also find Southernish on Facebook as well. Thank you guys and have a great day.